Hey guys, thought I'd make a short video today just discussing my epiphany that I had the other day about wisdom and understanding. Now if you agree or disagree with me, please leave me a comment below and let me know what you think about this. Okay, so all throughout the Bible, men are practically begged to obtain these two things, especially in Proverbs. The word wisdom is used around 54 times, and the word understanding is used around 52 times. So if you're going to understand Proverbs, you it's, it's essential that you understand what these two ref words are referring to and what they mean. Now, let's pull a verse from Proverbs chapter 4. It says... Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all your getting, get understanding. This verse tells us that wisdom should be everybody's top priority because by it we discover goodness and the reason we're truly here. But man is not born with this. Wisdom is something that must be sought out. And I'm referring to godly wisdom here, which is vastly superior to man's wisdom, which I believe is the type Proverbs is referring to. And only our Creator is in possession of this. But by His love and mercy, He made He offered this to us through the hands of His prophets and His chosen people. They wrote down God's word so that He could lead men to the ultimate goodness, which is the restoration of their souls, just as it says in Proverbs chapter 19. It says, He who gets wisdom loves his own soul. He who keeps understanding will find good. So this is what I found. Wisdom is divine instruction offered to us by God. Understanding is when godly wisdom is found inside of a man who formerly didn't possess it. Proverbs chapter 14 says, Wisdom rests in the heart of him who has understanding. So both of these are almost interchangeable. The differences are very slight as they both relate to heavenly guidance. However, wisdom is God-given. Understanding is that same wisdom found within creation. Wisdom is divine directive, and understanding is that direction applied to yourself. Listen closely to Proverbs chapter 2. Verse 2 says, Incline your ear to wisdom, and apply your heart to understanding. Wisdom is dispersed to man by God, and made available to whomever will hear it. And understanding is when a man takes heed of that and grabs hold of God's ways and applies them to his own life. So once again, wisdom is like a map that's pointing us to the correct destination. Understanding is when you're able to take that map and put it to actual use. It includes reading the map, walking the path carefully, searching out your environment, and examining the outside clues to increase your overall understanding of where the person who wrote the map is trying to take you. It's really just a process of learning truth tangibly with creation and the map that was given by the map maker. Now, a man would never take these steps if he did not believe. Belief is the cause of him pursuing what the map is leading him to. It's the belief in the destination and it's the belief that the, the map maker's intentions are good. So recap. Wisdom are divine words to be heard. Understanding is taking those words, receiving them, and actually doing something with them. However, if a man does not respect the map or the map maker, or doesn't really have hope in the destination that it's promising them, then they're not going to consider the map, they're not going to follow the map, or take the steps in that direction. That is what scoffing is. It's a total disregard of divine guidance. The scoffer is one who assumes that he knows more than his maker. And that's why we get verses like this one. Psalm chapter 111 verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and good understanding have all those who do his commandments. The one who follows the Lord is the one who fears him, respects him, and takes him seriously. 
the man who takes heed to the prophetic word and puts them into practice is the evidence that he believes in God. It's faith, essentially. I want you to take note of that last phrase, though, where it says, men who do his commands have good understanding. And remember, understanding is just godly wisdom found within the man, which is not his original state. Men are not born with understanding. When men get understanding and possess it, you now have wisdom manifested in action, seen in the creation. Now listen to what Jesus says. Matthew chapter 7 says, Whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Jesus is referring to understanding here. The inclining of the ear, the receiving of the sayings, and then the performing of them. This is the very act of you building your house strong so that no storm will be able to knock it down. Just remember that hearing only isn't going to cut it. Matthew chapter 7 goes on to say, But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. So if you hear the divine directive, yet you disregard it, that is what the Bible calls unbelief. It's like the scoffer we referred to earlier. It is only by belief that you are restored and your soul is saved. It works a little bit like this. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 7 says, By faith Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. All men who believe the divine instruction and perform it by stepping onto the ark of Jesus Christ will receive the same blessings Noah received, a cover and a shelter from the stormy flood of God's justice, resulting in salvation and righteousness. Two things impossible for man to accomplish, God did through his Son, and promises those same blessings on all who believe on him. Now another good example of good understanding is Rahab. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 31 says, By faith the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. Same thing here. She believed that the spies were sent from God, so because of that she treated them as friends and not enemies. She received them into her house, took care of them, and then hid them from the enemy because they were God's representatives. The spies showed her God's mercy because of that. They gave her salvific instructions to take a scarlet thread and to put it in the window so whenever the armies of God marched upon the wicked city of Jericho to give it just retribution, that she would be spared when they saw the scarlet thread. These same blessings God will show us if we receive Christ, God's ultimate representative and then abide with him for the rest of our lives, that is done through faith. Christ, the embodiment of God's word, the word made flesh, is wisdom. If you receive him, the righteous Messiah, as your blood atonement for sin, as your scarlet thread in the window, you will be preserved just as Rahab was, and you'll get those blessings. He will grant to you limitless mercy and loving kindness. He will pardon every sin in the great judgment of men's souls. That is the power of Christ. That is God's wisdom. Christ is wisdom. Receiving him and abiding in him is understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. He who gets wisdom loves his own soul. He who keeps understanding will find good.
If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe because it helps this video be pushed out to more people who I believe really need to hear this. God bless.